This video is sponsored and brought to you by the dreamers that hang out on my live streams. Stay tuned to the end of the video to hear their names. If you want a chance to vote on what videos I release next, check out the Mr. X Dreams Discord server. Hey there friends, Mr. X Dreams here. Before I begin today's story, I have to warn you. This one is definitely one of the trippiest accounts I've ever received. I will start off by letting you know that I do not advocate for the use of drugs or mind-altering substances for any reason. This story talks about a particular dreamer's experience with such things. It will seem to make very little sense for a while, but we will break it down a bit later. I wouldn't be sharing it with you if I didn't find it very interesting, as you know. All I can say is, I hope you trust me. Here we go. Hello, Mr. X. My name is Arnez. I want to tell you a personal story I had while partaking in DMT, aka the holy mother of hallucinogens. The substance causes such intense and euphoric sensations and visuals that, after the trip, one is left wondering about the nature of reality itself. We are confronted with the possibility of other, more vibrant worlds far beyond our own, and we have no choice but to question which realm is more true, more real. In my case, over the course of a few weeks after my first trip, I saw strange entities everywhere I went. They would appear often in the corner of my eye. Whenever I caught one in my sights, it was always staring right at me. No malicious intent or negative energy about it. Just curiously staring. Watching, maybe. I saw the same beings in my dreams. When I asked around about these weird creatures, I saw that many believe the entities are trying to send some sort of message to those who have visited their realm. One thing everyone I know has said is that they always feel safe in the presence of these beings. It might sound strange, but I feel like they are waiting patiently for me to die, like they would never try to hurt me or wish death upon me. But whenever it's my time to go, they will be there to welcome me. I'm actually getting a bit ahead of myself here. Let me take you back to the first time I ever took the substance. So, I was thinking about it for quite a long time. I was able to get some from a reliable source, but I held on to it for quite a while. When I'd finally worked up the courage to give it a try, this is what I went through. 10 seconds in, I began to feel much lighter. 30 seconds in, I was wondering where my feet had disappeared to, because I couldn't feel anything below me. After a minute, I was flying at extremely high speeds, watching the world around me melt away. Time became meaningless. Unconditional love radiated through me from an unseen source. I felt like I alone comprehended what true happiness was. I made contact with someone so tall that their height could never be measured. Upon closer inspection, it was a larger version of myself. I smiled at myself, and we both opened our mouths wider than any human should be able to. I flew into the larger me's mouth, and a sound began to radiate from the back of my head. Soon, I was overtaken by it. The sound filled my entire existence with pure sadness. Suddenly, the love I felt was gone. I was alone. No more euphoria. No more light. I found myself transported to a new realm, one full of darkness. In the darkness, I began to see what I can only describe as elves, humanoid creatures with pointed ears and large eyes. Something about their appearance made me feel frightened. I think it was their expressions, which were twisted into an unrecognizable combination of negative emotions. They greeted me in a language I was not supposed to be able to understand, but somehow, I did. They told me that they served a being called, as I would translate it into English, the Stolen One. They welcomed me into their midst, showing me a structure that would be my home if I chose to stay with them. They said that if I wanted to stay there forever, I would either have to die or take a lot more DMT. I told them I was not sure I wanted to do either at the moment. From my perspective, I felt like I was there for days. The longer I stayed, 
the more I felt that loving energy returning to me. I began to realize I did want to stay with the strange beings. In the beautiful landscape of their home, love seemed to beam down from the sky like rays of pure sunlight. I was told it was the love of the Stolen One himself. One day, as I basked in the love of the Stolen One, the thought of death crossed my mind for a fleeting moment. At the same time, in a flash of light, I received a vision of my earthly family, but they were all dead. Naturally, I began to cry. Suddenly, I realized I was lying in the palm of a massive hand. The hand began to close over me, fingers the size of skyscrapers rising up all around. The stolen one's hand threw me into the clouds, sending me into yet another strange realm. The elf-like creatures trailed along behind me as I tumbled through the air, from one reality and into the next. I eventually blacked out. When I awoke, I found myself in a white void. Standing in front of me was a teacher I used to have a huge crush on during high school. She looked exactly like she did back then. Gorgeous. She undressed and told me she was mine to do with as I pleased. As she spoke those words, other women appeared, everyone I had ever thought about with lust in my heart. I am sure you could imagine what happened next. It was a scene of pure debauchery. I can't deny the fact that I never, ever wanted to leave that place. That is, until one point when I was making out with someone, and I felt an odd sensation. As her tongue swirled around in my mouth, I felt a second tongue appear, vying for attention. I opened my eyes and realized that her eyes were missing. Where they should have been, it was just flat skin, stretched over empty eye holes. She immediately began screaming in my face, her multiple tongues whipping against my lips. Another flash of light, and the sea of bodies disappeared. After that, I fell. It seemed like I was falling for a lifetime. As I fell, I saw vivid images from the events with all the women, playing over and over again in the sky around me. I was a slave to the hypnotic ecstasy of it all, and I could barely contain myself. When everything came to a head, if you know what I mean, I finally landed back in my room, lying in my bed. The entities that had been following me, the elves, were standing all around my room, staring at me. Some of them shook their heads, seemingly in disappointment. I felt like I had somehow failed a test of some sort. It was then that I realized I should probably never do DMT again. I knew there was a chance that I would become utterly dependent on it. The elves faded away after a few weeks. They stopped following me. Maybe they did want me to come back and become a member of their strange world permanently. I often wonder what it all meant. What should I have done to pass the bizarre test I was given? Please let me know what you think, Mr. X. Sincerely, Arnez. Alright my friends, Mr. X here. What a trippy story that was. First, I have to say again, I do not advocate for the taking of drugs at all. But if I'm honest, I always have been fascinated by the idea that we might be able to access other planes of perception by using mind-altering substances like that. The fact that many people say that when on DMT in particular, there are some common themes and common images or even characters that people tend to see independently of one another, it's really, it makes me wonder if there's truly a real alternate plane of existence that we simply need that alter, altered state in order to access. I, when I was writing this, and uh, I thought of a sort of an analogy. Imagine it's like Disney World, for example. Say there was a Disney World on every continent, right? And uh, there might be, actually, I don't know. So if you buy a ticket, you can go to Disney World and see all the wonderful sights, the characters, the same characters wherever you go. You hear the music of your childhood, all that great stuff. Now, imagine that when you buy a ticket to Disney World, that ticket magically transports its holder to a single location, somewhere 
in a hidden dimension, a location that anyone from anywhere in the world can visit from the comfort of their own home, wherever that may be, so long as they have that ticket. When they go there, they see the same characters, they hear the same sounds, they walk the same streets. I hope that makes sense. This is one of life's great mysteries to me, and uh, who knows if we'll ever understand it well enough to really solve that mystery. So thinking back on this story in particular, I wonder where exactly Arnez's point of failure was. He said he, he uh, felt like he passed a test, or fa rather failed a test, and I wonder, did he summon that the teacher and the other women that he had lusted after in his youth? Should he have summoned someone else into the void with him rather than succumb to those baser instincts of his heart? I wonder if he made an error by being swept away at the thought of his family's mortality, thinking about death in the base level vibrational existence or what have you. Was that what made him fail the test in the eyes of this mysterious entity known as the Stolen One. I also wondered if the elves he saw were perhaps the essences or consciousnesses of previous DMT users throughout human history that perhaps managed to pass this enigmatic test administered by the Stolen One. Now that's really far out there and it's really a, a kind of a, I'm, I'm kind of going, going out on a limb with that one, but the idea, imagine that when people take this substance, it's possible to in encounter an entity that can literally cause your your essence, your spirit, soul, mind, whatever whatever you call it, your your astral self, to transcend this reality. That's the kind of stuff that people build cults on. So I'm not going to talk about that too much, now that I think about it, but. Actually, I am for a second. Just just bear with me. Imagine those people pass the test. They, are, they show themselves to be virtuous or to be truly disconnected from their previous earthly existence. And therefore, the Stolen One is able to sever the tie between their consciousness and their body and just keep them there. And eventually they transform into these elf-like beings and maybe they're lonely maybe they want more people to come to them this sounds like a good uh, good premise for a book or something yeah hmm so now i have a few questions for you to start off the conversation what do you think the elf-like entities actually wanted from arnez what do you think they were who in your opinion was the stolen one that the elves seemed to serve also, do you think these substances have the ability to truly transport the human consciousness? Or was our friend here literally just tripping? So much to think about on this topic. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. So now, I'm going to open up the floor for the dreamers to weigh in. Remember, if you want a chance at your question or comments showing up in a future video, or to sponsor a future video with a super chat donation, Turn on notifications so you catch the live reading and discussion. Always a great time on those. Alright, so Gabe Mesa says, It's all fun and games to go to other realms and dimensions until you can't come back. That is true, I'm sure. It's all, it's, it's, it's all mind-blowing and it's beautiful and fun, but you, you never know. It's kind of like that situation where the, the saying where they say the better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Everybody's got these troubles and, and harsh realities that you have to face in the real world, the world that we know, that we're born into. But imagine just jumping off the deep end and entering a completely different and alien realm. It's got to be pretty, uh, pretty scary. Casey Christian says, I wonder if the origins of the elves, elves in fairy tales and folklore came from a DMT trip whether intentional or accidental? Excellent question. That's really, really interesting because I know these mind-altering substances, maybe not DMT per se, but 
they've been used for thousands and thousands of years in human society, maybe more. So perhaps, perhaps a lot of our modern folklore or folklore that we have now, and even the notions of superheroes and, and mutants and monsters and things like that, there could be, there could be the case that someone a long time ago saw certain, certain things, kaiju, Godzilla, crazy things like that. We never know. We, we probably never will know, actually, but it's fascinating to think about. Tariko Tomoso says, me personally, I'm perfectly happy with the amount of DMT my body already produces. Not interested in adding more. That is interesting. I, I didn't know that the chemical DMT in particular is produced in the human brain. I mean, I'll take your word for it on that because I'm sure that there's, I mean, I feel like I have heard that before, but imagine someone whose glands in their brain just became overactive and created more of that than is normally needed or normally uh, whatever is useful to the body. It kind of seems like we have the ability innate within ourselves to access these things naturally if only we could find that switch in our brain to do it. Very interesting question. Reed says, Seems like the Stolen One wanted to steal the story writer away from this reality. Uh, yeah, it's that, that could be it, but Cindy had something to say that's also um, along those lines. We'll get to that in a second. Lori Long says, Fairy folklore contains many, many stories about them luring people and children away. The ones about children often tell of changelings being left in place of humans that are stolen. That is a good point. That is a good point. I wonder if, if the uh, fairy lore might have influenced Arnes's uh, visions here. That's, that's an interesting point. It's very, there are a lot of uh, parallels there someone being taken from one reality and you know who knows if they would have replaced them so last but not least cindy s says elves are tricksters the demon women could have just been them tricking him into staying and the stolen one could have been someone else that the elves had tricked into staying so who knows who the stolen one is but i would definitely say well you know what let's let's break it down for a second when when Arnez initially thought about his family dying, that was the first time he seemed to be cast out of the paradise level that he was on, where he was really thinking, you know what, I would like to stay here. So there's two ways, there's more than one way of, of thinking about this. If the giant hand threw him into the next, into another level where his crushes and all the people, all the women that he was always, all ever attracted to were there and willing to obey his every command, that, that could have been a distraction technique to say, hey, don't worry about death, don't worry about what your family's doing back in the real world, here, have all this debauchery that, that, to your heart's content. Or it could have said, you know what, he's too connected, he might be too connected to the world for our purposes so let's give him let's give him a test and the reason why i feel like it was a test and and he might have failed was because of the the disappointment that he perceived from the elf-like entities when he ended up back in his home because he when he 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 uh did what he did with all the women and he was kind of booted out of the, the experience after that. And imagine going through all that, landing in your bed, and the, the creatures that were trying to get you to stay are now just shaking their heads like, man, you, you messed up. Very fascinating, very interesting uh, concepts in this story. It's, this is one of the most unique stories that I've done on the channel, as far as I know. I don't remember where I got or when I got this email, but I once in a while I go back and look at old emails that I've not not uh, opened, and I believe this was one of them, because I've never spoken about this before. 
So thank you to Arnez and thank you to all those who uh, super chat donations, sponsors for the video uh, during the live chat. And thank you very much for you all's uh, participation with these amazing questions and observations for this story. It uh, adds a lot of value to when I do these. So the first person who was able to come up with a good code word for this story was Gabe Mesa, who simply said, elves. If you're listening to this part of the video, type the word elves in your comment down below so I can see who the real dreamers are. Until next time, my friends, take care. Special thanks to this week's Super Chat sponsors. Who Gives a? Henry Vang. Shin Fitz. Angela Radlove. Cindy S. Jessica D. Cancionero. Lila Catherine. Reed. Tariko. Lori Long. Brenda. Arlene. Samantha. The Lionheart 021. Zen 2011. Mr. Creepy Pasta. A. A. Ron McCreeps. Zucker. Thank you all very, very much for showing me so much love on my birthday. All right. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, don't forget to like and share. If you made it to the very end, you're exactly the kind of subscriber I'm looking for. Don't forget to turn on those notifications. That way, you can catch the live show and discuss the stories with me. Your input might even appear in my next video. Last thing, if you heard a code word after the story, Type it in a comment down below so I know who the real dreamers are. Take care, my friend. Until next time.